Welcome to the Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham. Jimmy is a veteran U.S. Navy SEAL, a former protective officer for the CIA Global Response Staff, founder and CEO of the Abel Shepherd Program, a husband and father of four, and a personal friend of mine. Now here's Jimmy. Welcome back to the Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham. I'm your host, Jimmy Graham. Um, joining me today again, my brother for Dash 2, is the 86er. So Jason Campbell, the guy sent into 86 folks. Uh, Abel Shepard, number 86. What's That's up, right. brother? You ready? We're doing it. We're you doing ready? it. Um, man, uh, we didn't even scratch the surface on the last one. So I want to come back this week and uh, intro, Jason. If you, uh, if you haven't seen those, sometimes these things are funky and they don't play them in order. Um, check out. Uh, online or on protectorculture.com to watch these. So these, this is the video version is on um, protectorculture.com. Obviously, the podcast is where you get your podcast and music. Uh, so you know, uh, Apple or Libsyn or what's the other one? Spotify, all those. Uh, but if you didn't check that one out, Jason, my man, drives down from Montana, has a couple mm-hmm. times Missoula, Montana, Missoula, Montana, to basically folk, uh, to come in and hone his skills with us at the Abel Shepherd program. We were kind of talking about how he learned about it last time, what sparked this as opposed to all the training. There's quality training out there. There's not so quality training out there. There's a lot out there, but something out there, something within the uh, the podcast of the American Warrior Society, check it out, uh, Mike Sieglander, uh, prompted him and many others to come check us out. I mean, yeah. enough to basically say, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, commit and invest my my resources, and my time to come check these guys out." The other thing I would like to throw in Please. there is, is I would like to make the Missoula connection uh, to a couple of great guys, Scott Gizek, uh and his instructing partner Nate. Yep, uh, were the trainers that uh, are connected with Mike Seeklander. And so I have a huge sense of appreciation for those guys having the kinds of relationships where they can get folks like Seeklander into Missoula, Montana. Absolutely. So I just wanted to make sure that I gave them a shout out. Those are uh, pistol tactics trainers, Practi- rifle, practical all of it. shooting instruction. Yeah. Awesome. Pistol, pistols, and ARs. Awesome. Can't wait to meet them. Um, let's talk about that for a second. The Montana connection. What's the What's the Montana connection here? Uh, we were talking the other night about many times us maybe crossing paths and we kind of put out the teaser about the Jack. So mm-hmm. talk about that. What's the Jack and how could we have maybe crossed paths in the past? If you don't know the Jack, you should, <laughs> you don't know. You're wrong. Jack. Yeah. Uh, the Jack is this classic Montana establishment on a dirt road out in the woods got to know about it to know about it or know a guy and it's it's interesting uh it's just a super cool place really relaxed uh log cabiny uh only big if, log cabin huge yeah log cabin bar log cabin bar cabins out back god's yep. country god's country uh beer's ice cold it is mountains are blue Mountains are blue and you need to be there. And if you could pick one thing about the Jack, ease into it. Cause I'm kind of priming you for something. Whew. One thing, maybe on the wall, maybe punched into the timbers. Jimmy Graham, we're not going there yet. <laughs> oh, sorry. We're, we're going to get so. there. We're, we're going to get there. Okay. We're going to get there. Walk us in. Bring well, us home. Well, the Jack is one of those places that... BK is dying over here because he knows exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> so the Jack is is just a special place. And when people come into Missoula, uh, it's it's one of the places I like to take them to give them a, just a classic Montana experience. And so um, one of those experiences, a couple of those experiences is when when all of my siblings and I get together. And uh, on one of those uh, occasions, we decide, and the Jack is not easy to get to, by the way. You know, it's uh, up Highway 12 out of Lolo. And so from the house to get to the Jack, that's like a 45-minute investment. And so we decide, all the siblings and spouses and all that, decide to roll out to the Jack uh, and, and 
just kind of cut her loose a little bit. And so the Jack has been in the family based experiences of, of Missoula for quite a while with my family. And, uh, I, I can remember in those early experiences, um, cause you go into those places and there's all kinds of, it's so eclectic. I think, uh, I mean, you're, you have all the old logging equipment in there. I mean, timber's the huge industry of that area. And so you have old school, uh, chainsaws and hand saws and whatever. So you just kind of wander around the Jack and check out whatever's tacked up on the wall. And so somewhere along the line is, uh, in tucked up above the bar, uh, is this black trident, but, but there was never anything associated with it. It's just this trident sitting up there. And that obviously stands out compared to, um, whatever dollar bars and someone's signature from dollar bills and someone's signature from Nebraska or whatever. I mean, then boom, here's this trident sitting up there. And, um, so it was really interesting, um, when, uh, when, when you were telling me about the motorcycle ride and that you wanted to hit the Jack and I, I didn't know any of the story. I just knew that I liked the Jack and I was surprised you even knew what the Jack was. Yeah. And so tell me how you know about now, the hold Jack. Hold on, hold on. Now you're getting ahead. Uh, Cause now if we're going to tell the story proper, like what ride? Yeah. Tell me about the ride. So in uh let's see must have been 2017 or 18 we proposed that we do a motorcycle let me back up even further um in two th- in, in 2010 um we did a ride motorcycle ride um dang it let me back up even further around 2004 2006 i'm just guessing here a buddy of mine lance vaccaro and i talked about he he showed me a movie uh, an actual tv show called the long way round mm-hmm. um it was two actors that did a motorcycle ride, Ewan McGregor and, oh, dang it, George. Uh, no, no, no. Dang it. Help me out. I feel bad now. It's this great me. guy. Anyways. Yeah. Two guys, Ewan McGregor, Star Wars guy, all this stuff. They did a motorcycle ride starting in London and ending in New York, but they took the long way around. So they went around the globe. Do we got a fact checker? Can we get a fact, fact checker. checker on that Come name? On, brother. Help me out. Um, the... That's, this is going to bother me. BK, find out who that guy, what that fact, guy's name fact is. Fact checker, BK. So, long way around. Um, two buddies, and it's this raw kind of gritty. You can, it's two actors that didn't know. I'll be honest. It was two actors that didn't know what they were getting into. Right. But what they end up doing is learning so much about each other and their self. Uh, it's just real. It's real because you can see it, man. They're done. You can see them about ready to crumble, and I love it. I love it when people are on that deal, and it's just it just doesn't get any more real than that. A couple moments in that where they're just in tears and like, what have we done? This is over. They get to Russia and there's so much like ice melt that they just can't go any further and they're just done. And they sit, this was a big waste of time. They're sitting there. We didn't make it. KTM says, you're not going to make it. So they, whatever BMW says, Hey, we'll roll with you. If you're going to do it. One of the biggest KTM mistakes in the history of ever anyways. And, uh, and they're done. And then here comes this logging truck out of nowhere going through this water over the windshield. And they go, yeah, we'll take your bikes over. And then off they go. And another one, and it's not a big part of the movie, the show, but one of them was that, um, mm-hmm. Charlie Borman. Mm-hmm. How Thank can you, you forget, forget Mr. Mr. Borman? I know. I'm sorry. Hey, when you're listening, brother, I apologize. So Charlie Borman, uh, and, and they, um, at one point in McGregor, this Russian dude comes down and he's got an AK 47 in one hand and a guitar in the other. And he's like, ah, 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 ah. like, I'm what pretty, does that mean? I'm you're going to sure sing was about vodka in killing too, me. Like somewhere. what's happening right yeah. now? Cause you're in the middle of the you, you nowhereville in Russia. And a dude comes down with an AK and a guitar and he grabs this thing and just belts out this kind of, this song that is perfect for that moment. And that's kind of one of my favorite parts of the whole show. It's just really, really cool. Really gifted, obviously actor and, and artist. But anyways, he says, um, we should do something like that both single guys and uh wait wait at that point yeah so at that point we say uh okay let's let's look at something we have done some training in alaska and i know for a fact that every fourth of july they do this thing that's a it's 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 a um, independence day um run straight up the mountain right so um Anyways, so um, I said, let's let's go out there and do that because it's a very patriotic thing. Let's ride from Virginia Beach, Virginia, all the way to Seward, Alaska, 
and do this Mount Marathon race. But you, it's a, it's one of those that where you got a, uh, a drawing thing, but we put in a special request that we could get our team to run that deal. That will be our turnaround point. Um, so said, okay, let's do that. Anyways, in 2008, unfortunately, we lose Lance Vaccaro. So one of my best friends, uh, SEAL, Navy SEAL Chief Lance Vaccaro, we lose him to a training accident. Um, after all these deployments and all that, he's, he's uh, preparing to teach others how to jump bundles out of planes. And it's a long story and all that stuff has a malfunction and doesn't survive it. Um, so at his funeral, I say something to the effect of, uh, man, I'm so sorry that I didn't make the time to do that. Mm-hmm. And a buddy of mine, Scotty, goes, uh, Scotty, I tell you that was on the ride. He says, uh, let's do it. I said, okay, next year. And he goes, now nah, I'm deployed overseas next year. I said, how about uh, 2010? He says, Roger that, let's do it. So we plant, put on the schedule and we do this thing. So go out and do this ride from Virginia Beach, Virginia to Seward, Alaska to honor him and to raise money for the Navy SEAL Foundation. So A leads, B leads to C, say the amazing people, friends we had, got started getting wind of this. I didn't know about Facebook. I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't care about any of that stuff, but they start promoting this thing. It gets bigger, bigger, bigger. So 2010, we roll out of Virginia. By then I had moved to Montana. So I'm living in, I'm living in Helena, Montana. When I committed to this, I didn't have a motorcycle because I sold my, my, my Harley, because I'm a family man now. I sold my Harley that I rode with Lance all over Virginia Beach and all that stuff. And then uh, by the time we roll out, we're sponsored by BMW. We're sponsored by Toyota. And we're heading for this 12,000 mile adventure. Unbelievable, right? So we do all that. Um, that is unbelievable. It just unbelievable. You fast forward, everybody's been on me to do another ride. Hey, we should do another thing that was amazing. We ended up clearing like 45 grand for the Navy SEAL Foundation to, you know, to obviously in, in his name. So just a, a super cool thing. Yeah. 2019, we launch out yet again. This time, uh, Lineage Ride 2019 was to, to benefit Able Nation in order to raise money to protect our children in schools and churches and all that stuff. We're even doing this COVID thing when schools open. They're going to need masks and supplies. We're going to raise money. We're going to help them whatever way they see fit. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. So we launch out there. And as we're coming through, it, our route roughly took us out of Denver West, you know, all the stops included, jump in the ocean, travel up the coast, see, get our Seattle Space Needle pick, uh, you know, stop in Leavenworth, Washington, which is an amazing town that you have to uh, check out. Bonfires, food, ceremonies, tears, all of this. Because it's a memorial ride. We're remembering people. Lineage ride means who got you here. So the, remembering the people that helped get you here, who are the heroes in your life. Maybe mm-hmm. it was a vet. Maybe it was your dad. Maybe it was a whoever. People are sharing these stories and we're all balling and everything. Get on the road, and now we're heading towards Montana. Montana. <laughs> so uh, the 86er and Mrs. 86er say, let's see, we're going to link up with you here, and we're going to join on the ride and head down. And I say, I need to make a stop. Why do you need to make a stop? Because I need to go out to the jack. Do you know what that is? And you look at me like a crazy person. Do I know what the jack <laughs> is? Know? Now, we got to tell this story in its entirety, because I had no idea the significance of me asking you to lead us down Lolo Pass. Please. You want a little history there, Jimmy Graham, that specific route. Yeah, that's uh, th- that's a good question. It's uh, that route that goes up Lolo Pass. Uh, one of the, one of I guess one of the things the audience uh, should know about me before that piece of history is I am a citizen of the Spokane tribe, but I'm also of Kalispell tribe and Nez Perce, Nez Perce descent. And it turns out that that Highway 12 is the route uh, that was commonly used by the Nez Perce um, going back and forth, do a lot of trading out of Missoula, but then going out farther on buffalo hunts and those kinds of things, right? And uh, so that that ride up that pass, and there's a, um, there's a fort uh, location that you pass along the way and those kinds of things. So it's, it's a very historic route and if you don't know that it's not obvious when you're just rolling through there it's not obvious yeah i did not know that after being out there many times yeah uh and so we got to that uh to the meetup point and you say jace you want to take point and it's uh what do you notice about my bike jimmy graham (laughs) you talking about the handprint yeah what do you notice about brother i Again, it didn't even dawn on me. You're like, going to take point. You're like, you know, I do. And when you went out there and we're rolling, there was just something cool about it because you know, there's that. It's a red handprint, right? Bright red handprint on that beautiful GS. Yeah, yeah, and that's so. I've got that. Uh, got my war pony all done up, 
And so we're rolling out to the jack, war ponies leading this group, and, and man, it was good. It was powerful. And this is a memorial ride called the Lineage Ride. And again, the way this played out, is Jason's up there, and he, you told me, like, hey, you know how much that meant to me? On a memor- Lineage Ride on Memorial Day, you have history there. You would go out for Memorial Day means more to you. Yeah. Because I and you would go out there and uh, and do a hike on that path due yeah. to your, due to that story that was amazing because I had no idea I'm just saying you know it'd, it'd be cool to honor my brother because this is your backyard you know what I mean yeah why don't you take point and then we'll follow you I've been out there I know where to go I know how to get there and all that stuff yeah once you're a point and you're like you know I will and we just we just go and there's something about it and I'm not picking on Harley guys but you're a GS pilot and so am I and you know so these BMW uh, uh, dual sport adventure bikes and all that stuff. And yours is all decked out and everything. And we just when you get in sync hugging those corners in God's country, mm. there's something, bro. And you say, when you look back in that, you just you take a little quick peek at that rear view and you just see everybody kind of singing along with you. Yep. And you're up leading these dudes down this trail. It's a big deal. It's just a cool thing you can't even describe if you're out rolling a Prius. So- <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I apologize for my Prius pilots. <laughs> so it is just something that's unbelievable. So we're rolling out there and you're like, what you doing rolling out this way and all this stuff? And you lead us out there and the Harleys, obviously, they got to go real easy on that when it gets to gravel and gets really rough. A GS will eat that up all day long. It's hard to go yeah. slow on gravel. Oh, it is. God, it is. So painful. we're like, dee, 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 and we're just playing with it and all that stuff. And we're rolling. We roll in there and you got these bikes all line up and we roll in and I go, man, I left, this is, whew, I left something here 15 years ago. Cause when I got out of the military and active duty, and then I stayed reserves and did all this stuff in 2004, I had a bad trip to, um, to let's see, Kuwait and, and Iraq, meaning that a lot of guys, four American contractors were killed in Iraq. I did a two month trip with Blackwater USA when nobody knew what that was. Right. And some guys on my team were killed, hung from bridges, set on fire, all the stuff. So when I got done, they offered me a job and I said, no, I don't, I don't appreciate the way you guys handled that. Right. Your management material, you're going to go all the way. We're going to send you to Africa and all that stuff. I'll be in Montana. Hmm. Just been called to Montana. Don't know why. I've been out there many times. So me and my dog went to Montana and, um, shoo. Wow. Wasn't expecting that. Mm. So we go out there just to control all delete. Just to get right. And we would we would for three weeks up in the mountains, one of the best things I've ever done, because it really was kind of a a defining moment. And I I headquartered out of the jack. Meaning, this is another way you learn about the jack, right? Is your realtor, I go, I'm going to go out there and I'm buy a piece of property. I'm going to, um, just leave me alone. I'm just going to go do this thing. And this is, I've talked about this. <clears throat> when men come back from like, you know, that kind of environment, um, I think a lot of guys are like, I'm going to buy a mountain. Uh, I'm going to go up on a mountain, buy a cabin. You leave me alone. I'm just going to do my own thing. I have since learned that you're not going to change anything by doing that. There's nothing wrong with going out and getting right in the mountains and doing this. I'm drawn to the mountains. I'm drawn to the mountains. But you ain't going to make a difference up in the mountains. You're the weird dude talking to the trees, right? <clears throat> so that's cool as long as you come back and get to work. So then get back and find out who you're going to be, raise a family, I don't politics, do whatever, start a business. But you got to make a difference. So anyways, I was in the midst of figuring all this out. I literally went up, you know, spent some time with God. I spent some time with the dog. We would just hung out. And every few days we would come down to the jack. And in the back they have cabins. And they're dirt cheap especially if you stay multiple nights because they don't have to pay the cleaning lady, right? right? Right. So I would come back, get a shower, do all that, and just shoot up in every direction through Montana and figure out where I wanted to live. I went and um, uh, thought I was going to be a smoke jumper, work for the Forest Service, all this stuff. So one night I'm drinking beers, hanging out. Some uh, uh, A buddy came out there, and he had just gotten engaged on that stuff. We hung out and had a good night there. And I, had a, uh, I saw this memorabilia up there. Just kind of having a moment, I looked up. I go, in my truck, I've got to try it. It's a black one. They don't even have black ones anymore. Now they sew them on. But back then, you wore them on your camis. And it wasn't this big gold shiny thing because it's, you know, it's subdued. So you don't want to be all, you know, whatever, bling, bling. Right. So it used to be a pin that was black. So I went out in the truck and I grabbed one. 
And, you know, I was talking to the bartender and all that. And like, I, she knew what it was. I like, do you mind if I put something up there? She goes, yeah, go ahead. And I went up there and I pounded that into the wall and left it there. And I think it, maybe I put the date or maybe my initials or something. I don't even know, whatever. So I go, I got to go back and check and see if anybody's messed with that thing, if they stole it or whatever. But it's, if it's there, that's kind of cool. I left something here. Yeah, I left something here. I got to go check. I got to say hi, yeah. right? So when we roll in there, um, we're all standing there and everybody on, on the team kind of knew what was going on. So I went in there and I said, uh, I want to, uh, I go, do you mind if I come behind the bar? They go, they're like, why? And I go, I left something here 15 years ago and I want to get a picture. And they're like, he's here. And they started, yeah. You were there. It's the guy. It's the guy. They're like for 15 years, people have asked about that and they've wondered and nobody's ever known. There's no good answer because nobody that works here remembers anybody ever putting that up. So we talked about it and all that kind of stuff. I think she wrote down my name or maybe I think we put a business card up there or something, like whatever. And they were like, hey, whatever. So it was just a really, really cool thing. Um, and then, you know, put that up there, took a bunch of pictures with it as, as kind of part of that deal. Yeah. And then, you know, you're like, I've seen this here. Yeah. I've been here, whatever, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. you were saying we could have crossed paths back then. I, we yeah, could absolutely. have crossed paths overseas over some job opportunity that you had at some point. But uh, but just but crazy stuff. So anyways, that's the story of the Jack. The well, it, you know, and it's not surprising that people at the Jack couldn't remember some of them. <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> To the jack okay <laughs> well it it's was, up a dirt road for a reason but you know it's, it's something cool about Mizzou, uh, about montana in general and i would say you get away from the cities and i don't care what the news says there are very patriotic people do you remember those people that were there and they were getting drunk and they were being acting a fool because they were on a, um, a bachelor party kind of thing yeah. but um once they realized the connection and they said I was walking by and somebody said something about like, oh, what are they doing back there? Blah, blah, blah. And he goes, well, I think they put it up there. Well, who, whatever. I think that guy right there. And then I heard him talking about it and I was like, oh, I left something here 15 years. And then they were like, oh man, brother, thank you so much for your service. And it's just a cool thing. But you get out of, um, you know, the big cities, this is still a very patriotic country. For sure. Like period. And um, you can watch the news all day long and just get the wrong information where people are amazing people. They're patriotic. They support the military. They support law enforcement. They do all that. You're just not going to hear about them. And, uh, you know, and that's what I've talked to my buddies that are kind of losing that steam. And I really needed many times in my life, like the, like the ride, like that, like the Lance ride, like these other rides, when you go and meet those people, it rejuvenates you. It basically says, um, that stuff you see on the news is not true. Like this bar is, is America. That backyard grill is America. These people that are out smoking uh, meat and doing all this kind of stuff and, and on Memorial Day, that's the America I'm defending. And then when you go back out and deploy overseas, that's what you're fueled with, not the garbage that you spoon-fed to you. So that was a, that, those have been very, very significant moments in my life, including that ride, including the Jack, including the lineage ride in 2019. Um, that's a big deal, especially when you've got a situation when you're out there, you know, um, um, and, and honoring a, a buddy, a fallen buddy, or honoring the people we honored on our ride, yeah. you know, or riding down that, I had no idea, now you're taking lead, and it means something different to you, and you're a buddy of mine, so I care that it means something to you, you know, and then when yeah. you shared that later, I was like, oh my, <sighs> I, brother, I'd love to, you know, to uh, to take uh, credit for that, I wasn't even thinking, I just figured I'd do you a solid and be cool for you, and you're like, you have no idea how cool, and that's, that's awesome, awesome stuff, so. <laughs> that is. <laughs> Um, okay. So now, now try to keep up. Yeah. Right. You're like, try to keep up. I'm like, all right, man, I'll lean into this thing. I'll put this thing in the trees if I have to. <laughs> the, um, so Leslie came with you, um, to, for part of that and was part of that deal, uh, coming with us down to Bozeman. What's her take on you sitting here? She's up there right now. You're out obviously, you know, and I mean, you know, Rachel's all about me pushing to be a better, oh, and I forgot, uh, BK, give me a cue. What is a trident? What do you mean you put a trident there on a Navy SEAL uniform? There's, it's, it's commonly called, I've heard, I tried it, a Budweiser or whatever. It is the Navy SEAL insignia pin. So basically when you're wearing it, it's a big gold eagle, head low, you know, and there's, you know, I've heard many things and all this stuff about, you know, the wings are nice and high. Obviously an eagle is uh, a symbol of America. Um, that head is nice and low for being humble. It's holding an, um, an anchor, obviously for the Navy. It's holding a pistol in one of its, um, you know, whatever claws or whatever. Talons. Talons. It's, it's clutching like an old school pistol. So it's kind of timeless. And then it's holding the trident sideways, you know, for obviously the connection with the sea. So it's a big, big thing. It means a lot of stuff to seals. Um, it is a very, very, um, coveted obviously um community and uh, you'll see it like on the back of my gun somebody gave it up you know I've, I've 
etched it onto things, but it just means a lot to anybody who's ever done that. And anybody who's a patriotic, patriotic in any way, it's obviously, you know, it's not thrown around lightly, but just put it that way. Yeah. You know, not that the Marine Corps, you know, that globe and, and uh, Eagle and all that stuff, um, isn't, but it's just, it, to, to me, it is kind of, it's a very special thing. I don't leave those all over town. You know what I mean? Right. It's just something felt right that night. And then, you know, obviously, um, it comes back around, but it, does. it just seems to. So what does she think about you and your involvement with all of this? That's a great question. <laughs> you don't have to answer it. This might blow up right now. It, yeah. And obviously, uh, she's the better one to ask that question to. However, uh, in lieu of her presence, I will do my best. <laughs> forgive, so covering for, your... forgive me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you may have just handed me a shovel. And, you know, I, like I um, stated in the other podcast, she, she has this amazing ability to just go along with me up front when she doesn't understand it fully. She has faith in me and trusts me and... Mm-hmm. And, uh, all right, if that's what you think, then that's what we'll do. All right, here we go. Um, and so the experience that she had coming down here, uh, where we started at that very foundational level together, uh, she, she could obviously see not just the skilled side of this, but, but then the brotherhood, Right. And I, I would say this, that there are, in my life, there, I, I have very distinct um, areas of passion. And this protector culture is probably at the top of that. And why I'm saying that is, El Cunning is a very close second brother. <laughs> it's very close. Yeah, so, it. you know... <laughs> Uh, and, and so the fact that she can see that, that connection that she can see this, the audience can't, well, I guess the camera's there, but, um, she can see that. And that's the kind of thing that feeds souls. Yeah. And, and it seems like the world, this country, the country's culture is in short supply of, these opportunities in these communities where I believe that we can fulfill really what we're supposed to be fulfilling. It's, it's almost like the kind of culture when you and I are describing the culture and when you've described the culture, uh, in, in previous podcasts, uh, it, it's, it's almost like those kinds of values, uh, you take heat for yeah. the way the culture has gone in this country. And to me, that's insanity. To me, what you and I are talking about is, is the truly valuable things in life. And so when she sees this time that I spend away from home um, with my boy, Jimmy Graham, she knows that, that a, it's it's feeding my soul uh, on the level of how you and I can we talk about our relationship with God. Um, you and I talk about our job to love one another. Uh, we get to spend some hours shooting guns. I get to do entries with Jimmy Graham. Step aside. I'm doing entries with Jimmy Graham. <laughs> uh, and and she knows how important that is just in terms of what I'm passionate about. But then I can bring that home. Um, and so she's all fired up. Like, like she runs her own business, multiple businesses. And there is so much work that she does on a daily basis that she can't just jump in the truck with me and, and come down. Sure. Uh, and so, but she knows that when I'm down here, what I engage in, I also get to bring home with me and I'm a better man for it. Um, and, and she is supremely supportive of that. So that was a good question. That's awesome, brother. I appreciate that because the, um, one of my biggest fears is I walk out of that building 
and all the wives of the guys that have been blaming me for them <laughs> needing to buy an AR or a pistol or something like that are standing out there ready, ready to make this right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> we got a bone to pick with you. That's right. Cause they said, Jimmy said, I need an AR. Jimmy said, I need an AR. Now in Jimmy Graham's defense, you showed up with some pretty squared away gear. Your stuff was kind of higher, higher cr upper crust. And I'm like, that was not my fault. He was like that before I got here. We just given some additional skills. So um, I'm glad to hear that. And, and, and by the way, immediately what I could tell about us when she came down with you, athlete, competitive. For sure. Um, she was on step. So basically getting getting up there and showing like, hey, here's a way to do this, this, and this. Roger, Roger, Roger. And then smoked it. She did amazingly well. So I think that does help. And that's amazing to have somebody that's going to back you with that. And, um, you know, uh, I forget what book it was. It was an amazing book it was talking about. I, in several places have talked about this. Is not, you know, stop looking for what the world needs. Uh, look for what makes you come alive. Because what the world needs is more men that have come alive. So I think that is amazing to be like, um, to, to, to be looking for that thing that makes you spark and take off and go. Because if you're, if you're working a negative job, spend time in the bar or worse, you know, these, some of these places doing all this stuff, that stuff, even in a caustic environment, for work that stuff it sticks to your clothes it does you bring it home with you so does this though so like if you can get out there and grow and do that and, and it holds your head a little higher and we're doing stuff and at no point of any conversation i don't even have to try to think and remember i just know this to be true no part of our conversations have we been dishonoring to our wives have we talked about doing other stuff we might have a beer but i'm not i don't get drunk anymore you know what i'm saying right. back in right. that day that ship has sailed when i was a child now i'm a man put away childish things, all that stuff. Um, it's just very serious to me. Um, and, and, and I don't think there's any doubt in Rachel's mind. Shouldn't be in Leslie's mind. I'm not sure what they're doing right now, but I know what they're not doing. You know, they're not talking about me unless it's a, a growth, a Jason growth thing. They're probably working on, if I had to bet, I would say they're working on themselves. So they become better men for tomorrow. And I'm going to benefit with that. I hope that's the deal for all of that. There's actually, we joke about the, the able shepherd widows, I mean, all the wives they got used to get, ever, they used to be able to hang out with their, with their uh, husbands. But, and that's exactly, that's the exact opposite of what I've heard. I've heard they come home supercharged. Yeah. They're better men. And then, and I don't want to leave the women out either because we're going to be hearing on Thursday or recording on Thursday about the women's side of this too. Cause uh, we've got some amazing couples. I'm thinking, you know, Everett and Melissa right now and more coming where there are, um, if we see one of them there, you can bet the other one's at home with the kids and then they switch. Yeah. They go back and forth and they start coming and sometimes they separate, sometimes they stay at the same deal, but they get to roll through and get this amazing communication piece with their partner with this capability. Um, yeah. And it, that's pretty cool. You know, like I've done some training with my wife. She's nowhere near the able shepherd level. She's been talking about it for years. Actually, Melissa doing it might spark her into getting yeah. in here and kind of getting to that level. Cause, um, the odds are saying if you're with somebody, when this goes down, that's probably your spouse. Right. You know what I mean? You're yeah. like, man, I wish Jason Campbell was here. I wish BK was here. I wish Barker was here. Whatever. Skip was here. This you're with your wife and she better know what she's doing it looking that way. There's certain cues where you can be a team together in a dynamic environment and then, you know, hopefully be successful. Uh, that's right. And I, um, uh, I want to mention a concept that BK brought up during the break. So BK, hopefully I'm not stealing your thunder for, for future, but uh, he brought up the concept of, um, of, women and this protector mama bear thing and what i can say in my observations about leslie going through this is and and bk pegged it before i even said it and it's like you know we're in that training environment and leslie's using tones of voice and body posture and things that i've never seen before and she's getting real up in there <laughs> And so I, I'm really excited to hear the podcast with, uh, for Mother's Day with the women on here yeah. and just to see how that, how that experience uh, correlates um, with them. And it's, I, I know what I witnessed and it's spot on, man. So, so now that we have that training under our belt as, um, as a team, I feel sorry for whoever comes to that door in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know that we offered, we used to have, we, now we just call it the POP and it's a women's POP or whatever. But when it's all women, you know what that title used to be? Mama bear. 
That's what that class was called. So Perfect. anyways, we may bring back that title, but right now, just for clarity, we say there's the Protecting Our People class, then there's a the Protecting protect Our People class, all well, women only. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, Rachel's got some stuff, like some shirts out of Montana that says Mama Bear, whatever. Um, I want to finish with this, because I know that you've got a lot of you know business endeavors, and we talked about this quite a bit while you're here. Actually, when you first came in, it, it wasn't a training day. It turned into a whole other conversation and all that stuff that was amazing because we're out in our business. But this whole dog-eat-dog this is business. This is personal, all that kind of stuff. Um, we, we, um, this doesn't even really tie it. It, it does. And it doesn't, um, that kind of thing. You've become that one of those guys, you know, uh, my buddy Gary Ellis, what's up Gary. Um, he says, man, I, I just had to talk to Jimmy Graham. I had to talk to my wise counsel, you know, and if there's something significant in his life, he'll call me cause he knows that I'm going to shoot him straight. Mm -hmm. I'm like, not going to tell him what he wants to hear. Sometimes that's uncomfortable, but I feel like, you know, uh, the 86 is part of my wise counsel now. Neil Pinker, you know, all these, there's, there's people that will tell you, we've talked about this before, what you want to hear. There's other people that will shoot you solid. That's right. It's like, this might sting a bit, mm -hmm. but I want you to hear this because I'm feeling compelled to tell you. Um, how does this tie in? And um, when I wrote this down, I literally just was quiet for a second, started typing stuff down. We know, I mean, I know that... Uh, the the um man how am i i don't even know how to articulate this there is no such thing as this is personal this is business my business is very personal it's how i feed my kids all that stuff there's been some situations this week that have talked about that um how has that served you is it a big deal that there's a foundation that happens to be a christian foundation in this thing as i'm growing a business i'm kind of looking um, and talking to other people and you're one of them of saying um, I guess if you can be trusted with a little, you can trust with a lot. So in that regard, um, we already touched on this. If the foundation is off, everything else is going to be jacked. Correct. Shooting, business. Um, I'm not even sure the question I'm asking you. You've, you've, run the, you've done this more than I on the business end. We're on the right path. That makes me smile. <laughs> it, it makes me smile. Good, because I'm struggling. Well, you know what I'm trying to say? Because we talked no, about the other night. Yeah, yeah. I just don't know how to, what the exact question I'm asking is. Um, all I, I know is that um, sometimes as a businessman, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I say, I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. And I, I, I'll be, I, I follow G Jesus. Like this sounds, yeah. and now it's going to sound weird. Take I'm the wheel. Because I'm not putting it right. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. And that's a funny thing because literally that Jesus, take the wheel. Right, Rachel and I, I jack about this, jack around about this because I saw a woman spin out one time and she's like, ah, starts crying. So that Jesus, take the wheel. I'm like, what? You better get, grab that wheel and get off the road because I saw a woman spin out, sit there and just cry. And I'm like, okay, there's a time for Jesus, take the wheel. And there's a time to get off the side of the road because there's semis coming and you're still sitting on the ice, right? So I get it. But exactly is what you're saying. So we laugh about it. But yes, I'm like, I'm not sure where I'm going, but I know who I'm following. And it has always worked out. Mm -hmm. It hasn't always worked out right. Mm -hmm. Same different in your experiences, because you're, you're way ahead of me in this, as far as the businesses and all this kind of stuff. Um, that feels right to me. You talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, when you ask the question, are we on the right path? And uh, I have the luxury of the front row seats. And, you know, every once in a while I get the, I get the backstage pass to Jimmy Graham and, you know, the, the inner workings, but by, by and large, I'm in the front row. Right. Yeah. And, and so the luxury of the front row is you, you see how, how the play is rolling yeah. out and f fundamentally in business, it's what I have relied on. And it's it's taken some learning curve to get there, is engaging with with people that share your value set. Um, at the very least, you have to communicate what your values are, and you have to communicate that regularly, and that's what establishes and maintains your corporate culture. And so, in this case, the corporate culture also is a reflection of your personal culture and all of those beliefs. And so when I'm in the front row, you're spot on. And 
it's this the the thing about being an entrepreneur is that you're in this constant oscillation between working in the business the thing needs to get done i got to go train a class or working on the business what are the systems and structures that uh, that allow the machine to move forward and you're at this precarious place where all of the innovation and branding and sizzle is Jimmy Graham. But you're getting to the place where there's so many moving parts. Jimmy Graham can't be everything. And so he's got to offload that stuff. And so it's understanding that you build systems that are reflective of your values that maintains the corporate culture. Uh, and you're building systems that are models of excellence that can get replicated. And then you insert your highest and best use to those systems. Um, and you're just at the front end of that. And I watch your days and you got crazy days, brother. <laughs> you got crazy days. <laughs> yes, sir. And, and, but what I also see is I, I see you influencing your external stakeholders, your partners, um, clearly your internal stakeholders. They wouldn't, I mean, your internal team wouldn't be there if it wasn't for all of those things, right? right. But now you're in this environment where you have external stakeholders and your leadership is very clear and your standards are very clear. And it, it creates this sense of culture in a place where I what I see, and granted it's super limited, my exposure is super limited to this, but what I see um, is this influence where, where people are hungry for that leadership and hungry for that structure um, and hungry to develop themselves professionally. They wouldn't look at it like that. They probably wouldn't communicate it like that. But that's what I see in terms of practicality. And so when you ask the question, man, are we, are we on the right track? It's 100%. Absolutely, you're on the right track. And you have the fortune of uh, being blessed with an incredible team around you. Amen. I mean, look at BK. He's what up because like i haven't seen him he's so serious yeah, like i haven't seen him smile the whole statue. time he's like he's laughing behind there I he's check, like writing stuff he's, like, <laughs> he's playing music in the mic jack you're jacking my head i'm trying to focus <laughs> so, one of my favorite songs ever what's up chris Irwin? if he's listening so so that's what i see is yeah. it's this amazing team that you have around you the amazing response that you get from the internal community and the external community all of those are symptoms of doing the right thing. Uh, and so it's, I'm pretty excited for you. Brother, We've and I can't even, and I, I was trying to bait you with that and try to figure out how we tie this all together because I'm trying to basically express the, 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 the excitement of when you were talking, I'm thinking immediately about this amazing team, the momentum heading forward with people like Kat and Kate and Melissa and in, yeah, and I can't even say enough about Rachel. Rachel has just, she, when you, you know, when you start a business and, and a guy was just telling me this, one of the, one of our guys that owns a couple of gyms and everything. And he was just like, man, I got to figure out something with my wife because when you start, they are your go-to person because you're, when you're drowning, they're like, okay, you know, they're, it's, you know, like when you're, I heard a guy say this, he goes, having like a, a third kid is like, you're getting, you're drowning and someone hands you another baby. Like that's what, that's right. what it feels like. Right. You know, like, but I think in this business, when you're drowning, the last thing you want to hear is everybody who's got a great idea and tells you more stuff you should be doing. You know right. what you should be doing? You're like, brother, I can't even make it from breakfast to dinner. And you got a list of things to do. What is a blessing is people that take stuff off your plate. So when they show up and Rachel one day, she just looks at me very seriously and she goes, I'll take over the books the taxes and this and that. And it was just like, oh, because I could barely breathe, right? When she took over payroll and the books and all this kind of stuff. So I worked with a bookkeeper and a CPA and all that kind of stuff. It was just, I don't know, think she knew what she was getting into because later all she knew was that my husband was trying really hard and this would help. And it was life-saving. Um, so when I think about all these people, 
you know, like Parker and Skip and BK and Pete and just you name it, Eric and and, and everybody, the volunteers and and um and everybody involved in this thing. I see this unstoppable team with an amazing opportunity in this building that we're in, the building across the street, all this stuff, because I haven't seen anything like it. But more so than the tactics, that's the part where I say I haven't seen like it. If I haven't seen anything like this available to civilians and he gets them to this level, um, it would be enough. I think it would be enough. But this is what's going to make it unstoppable is the community. When you see people going home and we, you know, and, and uh, they can be a part of this and leave a better man or a better woman and then tell people about it. Now I see that's unstoppable. Yeah. And I think that you're like, oh, well, um, you know, and you get to you know interject your faith. No, it's the other way around because I interjected my faith and, 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 and I won't forget this quote for as long as I live. Um, I might mess it up a little bit, but the, the core of it was, uh, you know, I was, I was talking about Jerry Boykin uh, in one of the podcasts and I remember he said this and he's like, you know, dark times or harder times or whatever he was talking about, you know, dark times are coming because people are people and, and just this, we can't continue on this trajectory and where the truth is spoken, people will gather. And I've seen that play out here. I've seen people, you saw, you just mentioned it. When we were in there and, and cl- classes were over, that used to be six to eight. I was the only guy teaching. It was six to eight. And nobody got out of there short of midnight because they didn't want to go home. They just wanted to hang out in something. I don't know what it is, but I don't want to leave this building just yet. And then, as you know, it goes to the parking lot. And then you stand there until you can't feel your fingers anymore. And now you don't know if you're going to be able to turn your key to start your car. And you go, I really got to go home now. And then you leave and it's one o'clock or whatever. And we say we leave in phases. No matter where we're at, we always leave in phases. Like, at least let's take it. And that's a joke. At least, BK, let's just take it to the parking lot. Just take it to the next <laughs> level because really, really, I need to get home because I got to get up and take my kids to school, whatever. Uh, but um, it went away and we said, you know, whatever. We, we kind of got a handle on that so I could actually get some sleep. But then when people are, they just, they're, they're drawn to that. So that's the thing I think that's going to be. If, yeah. if, um, if this is wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's amazing. It blows me away. And then to bring this over to Centennial Gun Club campus, now we get a chance to prove that, not with 200 people, with thousands of people. Once yeah. they see what's coming, it is unbelievable. And then I just told the team today, because we're training, the, we are training the training team, the, the, the cadre, on what we do. And it yes. sounds funny, but everything from the second they walk in the door, it's not an accident that people get them up, you know, pre-coronavirus, whatever, sh- shake their hand, thug hug, do whatever, and then welcome, glad you're here. The way you say hello and goodbye is a big deal. Make people feel like they're welcome. Why? Because they're welcome here. Because they they're are. business, right? Yeah. They mean a lot to us. And then when you start doing that and then people start gathering, they don't leave. They want to hang out. They want to do this. And um, I don't know what this looks like in the future. I just know it's going to be huge. And I'm glad to be a part of it. And like I said, our faith, my, you know, it's, that is the glue. Like, I don't think, I, I think these are smart people here. They're intelligent people. They can, they can sniff out a scam. To me, it's like, you know, because of all these scams out there, everything's a scam till it isn't. And they come in and they go, I, something's different here. This right. is a different thing, but you got to earn their trust. And once you do, it's worth more than money. That's right. Money comes later because it's worth it. Anyways, that's what I had to say about that. I think you got it. So, oh man, uh, I'm so glad you're in town, brother. Um, it's so good. Uh, let's see. We're gonna go ahead and uh, and close this one up. Thank you for being here. You stay you extended. Your your training was over on Friday, and you're just hanging out now and doing more and working on this stuff and uh, and and uh, sharpening your skills. And I'm glad you're here, brother. And I'm glad we got to record this. You have you you've been following the podcast. Of course. I know we were gonna I totally forgot about this, but we're gonna have to get you to phone in or something because we were gonna talk about you had some things about previous podcasts. So we'll have to get you back on, oh, on yeah, the yeah. phone. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, remember that one? And that's so cool. And I'm so glad we have this this forum because you walked in and you go, I feel like I've been here. Like it, it was just different because right. you've been seeing us on the video portion. So it wasn't like that as strange. I haven't seen you in six months. Like, right. man, I see you every Monday. I'm up to speed. You're up to speed. All right. So take notes next time you're in town or we have this fancy thing that BK can do where he can bring in a phone call okay. and, uh, and, and pop it up and, and we'll, we'll be talking just Let's like do this, this, my man. Steel on steel. Steel on steel. Thanks for being here, brother. Appreciate you. Love you, brother. Love you too. Okay. Help me with the sign off BK. So five-star rating on, uh, what is it? Uh, on a uh, five-star rating on this and write a review, uh, on our podcast. And then on Facebook, check out ableshepherd.com to learn more about the able, I'm sorry, on Facebook, ableshepherd.com. As far as the podcast, if you want to watch the video version of it, check us out on protectorculture.com. Um, what am I missing? The, the program. <laughs>
If you want to learn the program, abelshepherd.com. That's A-B-L-E-S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D. Okay, so we're going to wrap up. Thanks again, my brother, for being here. We'll get back to it and shoot some guns maybe tomorrow. I don't know when you're going home, but we'll Let's figure that it. out. But until it. then, guys, uh, God bless each and every one of you, and take care of one another.